cell. Um, actually, um, I've logged into Office 365 and I'm going to open Excel. So I open Excel here. And um, last time we looked at this take a tour, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to open a new blank workbook. So here we are, Excel Office 365. Now, um, I don't want to work in Office 365 because I have the, uh, the Excel installed on my laptop. And so I'm going to want to say open in desktop app right here. And it's opening up. Okay, so here I am in my desktop app for Excel. Now I want to um, zoom out a bit. So I'll go into view, zoom, and I'll hit 200, so I'll zoom to 200 there. So that makes it easier uh, for you to read what I'm doing uh, on the video recording. Okay, so what I wanna to want to do is show how to uh, n enter numbers into Excel, and then uh, I wanna do some uh, plots, some charts. But first off, I'm going to do some uh, simple data entry and analysis and I want to calculate the values of trig functions. So the first column A, I want to put an angle uh, in degrees. So I'll put like this angle and then um, indicate that the angle's in degrees there. And then um, notice that my heading, this is going to be a heading for column A, is actually larger than column A. So to do that, I can click on the box up here and I can actually drag this over, make column A wider. So there, column A. Okay, now I'm going to want to convert that into radians because Excel does all of their trigonometric calculations assuming angles are in radians. And then I'm going to uh, compute sine, cosine, tangent are going to be the calculations I'm going to do. So to put the angle in radians, I'm going to start with zero degrees. Then I'm going to jump up to five degrees right there. Now, what I want to do is jump in five degree increments and go on out to 180 degrees. So I could enter 10 degrees, 15 degrees, and so on all the way down, but there's an easier way to do that in Excel. So I'll select these two boxes showing zero and five degrees. Then I'm gonna click on the bottom right corner here and drag it down. Now I'm going to drag down, I think I'm going to do the calculation out to 180 degrees. So you see that small little number appearing next to the cross says 180. That means the number that would go in, into that box A38 is 180. So there, there's my degrees, uh, my angle in degrees all the way down to 180 degrees. So to convert into radians, now you may not remember, but if I want to convert an angle into radians, I have to do a calculation. So the calculation is going to go like this, and now I'm going to put an equal sign. Whenever I want to type a formula in Excel, I put an equal sign. So I'm going to put equal. Now equal, and I'm going to take whatever number is in this box, in the A column box, which is A2, I'm going to multiply by pi, and Excel pi is represented in this way and divide by 180. So this should convert an angle into radians when it's in degrees. Now zero degrees also equals zero radians. Now 
if I take this and drag it down, it will automatically put the formula in, taking the value of the angle in column A, calculating it into radians. So I take this corner, drag down all the way to 180 degrees, and there I have all of these angles now converted to radians, and this is pi radians at the very bottom. So there's my angle in radians. Now I want to compute the angle's trig functions. So I put equal sine, and I put open close parentheses. Now I'm going to go back, put my cursor right in here, and I hit the back arrow. Notice it's telling me there's a problem. It's telling me there's a problem because I didn't put an angle value in there. But I'm going to do it now. And the angle value is going to be whatever that value is right there. I can put here, I put equal cosine. So I'll put equal, oh, not there. There we go. Get a little messed up here. So this is the calculation. Now, equal cosine. So I'll put COS, open parentheses. Now I'll click on the angle in radians, close parentheses and then I hit return. So you remember the cosine of zero degrees or zero radians is one. Here I'm going to compute the tangent equals tangent, open parentheses, click on that, close parentheses, hit return, so I've got the tangent. Now I'm going to click on all three of these boxes. Now I'm going to drag the corner here down, and as I do that, it's going to fill in those boxes with the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. So there's the calculation right there. Okay, now here, so here we have that calculation, sine, cosine, tangent. Now, we've got all the calculations, uh, and now I'm gonna to wanna to graph these, uh, these functions. And, um, graphing the data, uh, and I want to do all three functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, on the same graph. If I just wanted to, let's say, graph the sine, I could highlight here, uh, highlight radians, which, would, which is the angle measure. I go all the way down here, shift-click there, so it gives me all the data in the two columns. Then I go up to insert, and I'm going to insert a chart, recommended charts. And the chart I want to insert right here is XY scatter. I go to XY scatter, I'll go right here. So I want a continuous line, XY scatter. So there is the graph of the sign. Great, it's pretty easy. but as I said, I actually want to do all three trig functions on the same graph. So how would I have done that to begin with? Well, let me uh, delete that graph right there. I just did that. Now for the moment, let me click radians. Now I'm going to go all the way over to tangent. And I'm going to go all the way down here to 180 degrees. Click right here. And now I'm going to press insert and then scatter chart and I'll click on this. Now, what is this? It says that I have the sine plotted, the cosine plotted, and the tangent plotted, but I have this funny looking table right here. And in particular, even though the x-axis is going out to about pi right here, 3.5, uh, I have the y-axis going up to 1.8, 10 to the 16th. Uh, what's going on there? Well, what's happening is because over this interval from zero to pi, the value of the tangent actually can take on an infinite value evaluated at uh, pi um, let's see, let's look here. We're looking down on tangent, right in here, 
the value of tangent goes on to 1.6 times 10 to the 16th. And basically, the tangent of pi over 2 is infinity, if you recall your trig functions. Uh, well, that's causing me a problem when I'm doing that graph. So let's just investigate this just a little bit. Um, well, how am I going to deal with that? And to deal with that, what I want to do, so let me just delete this chart here. There. So let's just investigate some slightly different graphs. Let me go right here rather than go all the way down to pi. Let me just go down to this value. So it's just short of the angle in radians being less than pi over 2. Let's see what happens when I do this plot. So I go back up here, insert. I'm going to insert scatter plot again. I'll go here. Now I do that, and I have this. Now, here you can see this gray line as the tangent is getting ready to shoot up to infinity right in here. And uh, still, um, and not, I'm not completely happy with the, the way this graph here is shown. So how can I fix that? Well, one of the things I can do is I can right click on the tangent curve. So let me do that. I control on the Mac, I control click, and I do format data series. So it picks the tangent, and I'm going to say secondary axis. Now what happens then is it changes the vertical coordinate for the sine and cosine, because we know the maximum value of the sine and cosine is always 1. And I have the uh, tangent now has a different vertical axis shown here. So I actually have two different vertical axes. And in particular, the, the tangent vertical axis gets its own y-coordinates. The sine and cosine have their own y-coordinates. And now I have a graph that seems uh, perhaps a little bit better. Uh, and I could actually uh, do this with uh, just about any graph where I'm plotting, doing multiple plots on the same graph, I can actually choose two different vertical axes by going through that process. So this then gives me uh, sine, which is in blue, um, cosine, and, uh, but wait a minute, what's wrong here? The sine and cosine don't look like they're right. So I'm doing this graph, and I have uh, the sine is 0 0.8 something or another. Is that right? Is that the right value for the sine? And it's not. This is giving me the sign of whatever is showing up in the d-axis. I should be getting the sign of what's in the b-axis. So here, I put should put in b2, actually I should, um, and not d2. So b2, how did that happen? Okay, b2, there's the sign. Now that's right. And But all the other values are still wrong, so let me drag this all the way down, and let me do that correction. So it was by looking at the graph that I could see, indeed, that somehow I was getting the wrong numbers in here. So somehow those numbers got wrong, now they're right, and here the sine and cosine axis looks like they're correct.